Hello, and thank you for joining this uh, discussion about the clowns. This is a new adaptation by the opera makers of the operas uh, Cavalleria Rusticana and Il Pagliacci uh, by Mascagni and Leon Caballo, respectively. Um, my name is Becca Marriott, and I am the artistic director of the opera makers. And I am Pan, or Panaretos, and I'm the musical director. The Rhythm Opera is a movement of opera uh, that originated in Italy uh, near the end of the 19th century. Uh, and it looks at different um, subjects of uh, uh, opera than had previously been done. It brings opera to a more domestic landscape, if you want. And uh, the main stylistic thing about it is that there is not much frippery, if you want, uh, uh, as there used to be in uh, operatic writing. There's not a lot of coloratura and melismas, uh, which means um, show off singing. It's more about speaking the text in a more natural way. Why are we doing Verisma opera as uh, our first um, step out there? Um, as I said before, Verismo offer its, offers itself for a little bit more uh, naturalistic, uh, realistic um, settings, both in its use of themes, in its domesticity, but more importantly in the way the music is written. So when you go to the opera uh, and up to a certain point, the spoken text uh, would take a few seconds to say, let's say, and in an operatic area it might take five minutes. So the relationship of time between speaking and singing is very different. Verismo opera is the one where uh, it comes as close as can be in the operatic world. So it's much easier to transmit thoughts and ideas uh, in more real time, if you want. Well, the two two main reasons. Um, the first being that these two operas are often or always performed together. They're two one-act pieces and so in a larger opera house setting where people have paid a lot of money for their tickets and they want a whole evening of entertainment, they're put together as one piece, um, so to speak. And what we found interesting about this was the idea that there must be some real connection between these and it opens up the doorway to play with two different styles of opera. You've got two operas always performed together, what if we merge them? What if we allow them to play with each other at the same time? And what if we can really cast a spotlight on how pliable opera can be? So you've got this sort of studio radical immersive opera in English, uh, juxtaposed with and set up for comparison with this very stylistic Italian uh, production of opera, the kind of thing that people would expect to see if they went to an opera house. So that's, that's one main thing. Um, and the second thing is that both of these operas deal with themes of violence, domestic violence and abuse. And as I said, one of the things that the opera makers exist to do is to work with themes that are very relevant to society today and to hopefully engage with charities and people working with uh, victims or people who are experiencing uh, these themes today so that we're bringing an element of truth to opera. There have been a lot of different versions of uh, uh, Cavalleria and uh, Pagliacci and some people try to put them uh, in uh, the latest David McVipka version of um, the Opera House, the Royal Opera House. Uh, they're set in the same village, so there's some uh, sense of one spilling it to each other. And uh, in other versions, they, some of the characters have been sung by the same singers uh, in trying to uh, bring them together. But what is different about our version is that, as Becker said, we're juxtaposing them. We're collating them and creating a new piece that didn't exist before, in which the two interact with each other. Pagliacci is very radical, it's sung in English, it's set in the auditorium, 
are it's immersive the characters the actors the singers will be within the audience they'll be touchable they'll be sitting next to the people who bought their tickets hopefully you to come and see <laughs> the production and they will be performing in a very naturalistic um very method acting style so really um bringing people into the idea of truth this is a real modern style of performing opera um whereas cavalry rusticana will take place on the stage so it's as though the characters of Ipagliacci have come to see Cavalier Rusticana and Cavalier Rusticana will be sung in Italian and it will be staged in a much more stylized way as I said and the way that these operas frame each other instead of being performed one after the other as Pam was saying the Pagliacci will slip in and out of the Cavalier Rusticana so these now feel like one opera rather than two pieces that create one evening's entertainment. A uniting factor between Cavalier, Rusticana and, and um, Pagliacci are two key themes, infidelity and domestic violence. So how uh, romantic relationships uh, that go sour can lead to e extreme violence and death. Um, mm -hmm. There's also um, theme, a theme in both of them about um, social stigma. Uh, what is the relationship between our fidelity to our partner and our place in society? Um, and that's apparent in Cavalry Rusticana with Santuzza. She's worried she's going to be an outcast from society because she's lost her uh, virginity to Turidu and he's now leaving her for another woman rather than marrying her and it's also apparent in um Pagliacci both in the characters of um Canio and Neda. Canio because he his status is is hugely infringed by the idea that his wife might be having an affair and partly his anger a large part of his anger is about how people perceive him it's about how he is perceived by society uh, rather than his actual anger at the infidelity and also in Neda uh, that her livelihood her job her career everything is entwined in her relationship with her husband so there's a huge it's a hugely powerful moment when she makes the decision to finally leave him because she's throwing away everything in her life There is a sort of poverty porn element to Verismo opera, uh, which is inescapable. Um, that you've got a wealthy audience sitting there watching uh, wealthy people pretend to be poor people killing each other. Um, and we wanted to get away from that. We want the people in the audience to see that the violence is not just somebody else's it's part of their world as well and that links back again to the idea of coercive control and uh, domestic violence and how so often that is something that happens in very affluent wealthy relationships not just you know in the socially lower class relationships so i think i think that was an important element of what we were trying to do um, with this performance the thing is Adapting, you have to make peace with the fact that you're changing someone else's work. Um, but if you are convinced that there is value in presenting something that speaks to a wider audience, that is a little bit more approachable, uh, without dumbing it down, without uh, uh, changing the intentions of the composer, which brings me to what are the intentions of the composer? We can't ask them, they're dead, most of them. Uh, so, does that give us free reign to work with their material? I think that's a matter of taste and a matter of uh, personal ethics and boundaries. For us, maintaining the core elements and presenting them in the musical background uh, that, the, uh, that was designed for them is enough to give us an answer, to give us license to do so. So. Um, if you take a page of music that is originally written on a text that speaks of, um, I don't know, 
uh, love and flowers and you translate it into something that talks of uh, war and uh, machines then probably that's not going to work musically mm -hmm. but if you try to maintain the key themes and um, do it as a good translator would uh, in opera uh, like if you go to ENO and you see a fantastic translation that stays true to the original uh, but without being a slave to it then it works if any art form gets to a point where it can't be playful it can't be manipulated then that's where an art form is in danger of losing relevance and losing audiences um and i you know i strongly believe that any composer any librettist who created these works would much rather that they were reaching and attracting broader more diverse audiences than that they were only attracting a very narrow very affluent audience but were being very much kept um as you know sacred texts I, I i do believe that because i think a lot of the the people who composed these operas generally men um were very political and very socially active themselves so i, I think it is a it is fundamental to the work i i, I believe that my strong belief is that they are equally as important acting and singing one can't do without the other and i worked with many many singers and it's really obvious when one has been neglected um, uh, in the ex to the expense of the other it has to be the moment that has repeatedly given my spine this weird feeling <laughs> the, the, the tingles um, and it's the very end uh, uh, the last page of uh, I Pagliacci uh, the, uh, the theme uh, uh, tune uh, of the drama and the pathos and fate uh, which uh, you would recognize if I played it to you but I'm not going to um, um, You'd also recognize it because it's uh, it's a very famous song by Queen. <laughs> but we'll stop that by. <laughs> God, I didn't know. Uh, but it has to be my favorite moment because it's so powerful and dramatic that it makes all my hair uh, stand on end every time I hear it. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree with Pam. So. Um, that was our little chat about the clowns. Uh, I hope you found some interesting gems there uh, and that you will follow our work and hopefully come and see the show when we are able, post COVID-19, to put it on the stage. Um, uh, stay so tuned for our next chat about hopes and fears, our other piece we're devising on music by Debussy.